What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to your Monday Club Pack selection. Today we're taking a look at Atletico Madrid. We've got some nice players in here. Whether it's worth a spin or not to ye, let me know. Because there is some decent players in here. But I wouldn't say that there's game-changing players in here. Unless you're starting off, depending on where you are with your eFootball journey. Oblak is a beast. Carrasco is very, very good. And Hermoso is a fantastic defender to have. As well as Griezmann, who's a perfect kind of link-up man. We'll get to him in a second. DePaul is an excellent box-to-box -box type hole player who can cover a lot of ground but still have a lot of dribbling and passing ability. And then the rest of the players here, like Depay um, and Koke, they're very good players as well. But it just depends on what kind of team you have. If you've got a god squad with a lot of legends, these guys are not really going to interest you. But if you are starting off, I definitely think it's a good pack to improve your squad overall ability um, and kind of like be able to get some players that are in B form as well. So we will firstly take a look at Oblak and then we'll work our way back towards Hermoso, who looks to be a very, very solid defender for that 79 overall. Savage as well that we have there. But starting with Oblak, we do have him. He's one of the best keepers in the game. A lot of people don't use him because he's super expensive to buy with GP. He was always, when eFootball22 launched uh, way back when, he was the most expensive player to buy. Uh, I think he was the most expensive goalkeeper to buy by a long shot. He was nearly double the price of Donnarumma, if I remember correctly. But he has kind of like, you know, his price has been more reflected now. I think it's about 300,000 GP. Unwavering form, low, long throw. He doesn't have low punt, which is a big no-no for me. But he does have exceptional height and exceptional goalkeeper reflexes. So he is kind of like Donnarumma. He does remind me of Donna. I've played with him a bit. I still do prefer Donnarumma, but that's just because I have a bias towards Donna because he saved me so many times. I've come up against Oblak a few times uh, where he's, you know, pulled off some worldies. And I think a lot of the reason is because of these stats. Obviously, when we train him up, he goes to a 92 with goalkeeper reflexes and 90 catching, right? So catching isn't as important, I think. Um, now with V2.5, the goalkeepers, no matter if you have 99 catching, they will still parry shots. Um, you know, and, and they'll parry them out for a goal kick or they'll parry them back into the box. It's just the way that the goalkeepers are. But the reflexes is the big one. I mean, point blank saves. If you do a lot of manual goalkeep stop, goalkeeper stops as well, that will really come into its own uh, if you do a lot of manual stuff. If you just control the goalkeeper yourself when you're one-on-one, -on -one, if your opponent is bare down a goal, you can actually save a match uh, and be match make match with winning saves with that or match saving saves, I should say, pardon the pun. But yeah, he's a good keeper, lads, but I just don't know, is he worth spinning for? You know, I don't think is he worth the kinds of spinning for because his standard version is very similar um, and it goes 18 levels. This guy goes 18 levels as well. So it is the best version that they have released so far, um, in my opinion. But I don't know if he's as good as Donna in uh, in the net for me. I would still de definitely recommend standard Donna. But that's just me, lads. Our Courtois uh, would be a good option as well. We've also got the Paul. The Paul is a very interesting one, right? Because he plays like a box to box. He has the aggression that is still fairly mid. He has the defensive engagement, as you see there. He does go 28 levels. He's got nice speed, dribbling, passing. He's got everything you could possibly want, a wavering form. He's also got double touch, true pass and weighted pass, low lofted pass and pinpoint crossing. And he can early cross with long ranger and long ball expert as well. So he's an exceptional passer of the ball. He's got every passing skill that you could possibly want except one touch pass. But he is a whole player CMF. That means he can cover a lot of ground, but he still has that like kind of like uh, AI that's going to be popping up as a kind of a number nine in the hole. Uh, kind of getting on the end of the box and not really busting a gut as much as a box to box. Uh, midfielder such as Goretzka or somebody like that but he is fantastic I've played with the Argentinian version of Paul, and he is superb uh, he's one of the best players that I have used and I also had the player of the week version of him I had the standard version of him there's been a lot of really good versions of Paul. this one if you are looking how to train him up um, there is a nice option here because he does have 28 levels to go his standard version has 28 as well but this guy obviously has an 83 overall rating to kick us off right so he's starting with a two plus two on that whereas the argentinian pack is pretty much identical the only difference between this guy and the argentinian pack is the fact that this guy has got better starting off defensive awareness but worse tackling so i would say that this version is actually better especially if you're going to train him up defensively which we haven't really done in this one we've just 
just traded to a 94 overall. But still, a very good player, very interesting player to use, a wide variety of skills, a wide variety of stats. You can see there that all his stats are like over 85, and then all his speed and acceleration and stamina are excellent as well, with 76 defensive engagement and 72 tackling, which I would prefer to have a bit more. But because he's a whole player, I would definitely have him, you know, not playing box to box style football. So that might be something to, that you'll need to get used to. We also have here Griezmann. So Griezmann does not have his pink hair still. They'll probably wait to upgrade that and to put it in. Now Griezmann is a bit of a game changer because he's a super sub with unwavering form. He has first time shot as well and double touch. So you can actually run and gun with him. He does train up to be a bit of a beast. He is on D form this week, which is a bit of a pity. Um, but I do like Griezmann, lads. I've used him quite a bit in my Xbox account. And I will be using him if I do play on my Xbox and friend match lobbies and whatever. I, look, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with him because sometimes he's fantastic. Sometimes when I'm playing against him, I'm like, oh, I must really buy him and try him out a bit more. But oftentimes, he just kind of disappears in games. This is how we've trained him up. We will do a full training guide on him in just a bit. Koke obviously goes to a 93 as well. Fantastic player. Now, Koke is kind of your traditional box-to-box, -box, right? He's got one-touch pass, way to pass, low loft to pass, but he's also got fighting spirit, sliding tackle. Defensively, he's a lot better than uh, DePaul. So you are going to be a little bit more consistent with him if you want to be uh, kind of having him as your your box to box player instead of Goretzka or instead of somebody like, you know, Patrick Vieira or somebody that's going to be able to run forward with the ball, take shots, take passes, beat opponents, um, pretty much do it all. That's what you need your box to box midfielder to be. So he does go to 28 levels as well. He is slightly better than the Spanish version here, or slightly worse than the Spanish version, I should say, uh, because the Spanish version is 83 overall. This guy starts off at an 82. But I do like the fact that, uh, you know, you do have another chance to get uh, Koke because he is a fantastic player. We've, we've also got Savage here. Do I recommend Savage? Like, look, if I was training him up and you're even to max out his uh, defensive capabilities, you can go quite high with that. I mean, that is fantastic stats for a big 187 centimeter uh, defender with the Stryer play style. That's a big thing. The play styles are hugely important, lads. As I said, I'm still working on videos to go through the play styles, right? Unwavering form that you have here. He's also got blocker. He's also got heading man marking. He doesn't have interception, which is a bit of a pity. That's the only thing he doesn't have that stops him from being up there with the with the goats of the defense uh, in the game. But he does have a wavering form and everything else, including heading, man marking, and, of course, blocker, which is vital if you are using a center back that has destroyer because, you know, they are very aggressive now, when we're going, like, boosting him up, as I said here already, you, do, you don't need to worry about his speed or acceleration. But even at that, you can still have a 70 acceleration uh, defender, which is quite good with 70 speed, which is quite decent, 75 stamina. And also, for aerial strength, you're getting that up a good bit as well. I would never go higher. Well, you could go a little bit higher on the on the defense there to get his aggression to 98. That's going to be huge. But I genuinely think that he is... You know, apart from having interception, he could be a monster. I'm just a little bit, a li little bit worried. Um, you know whether he would get in the squad ahead of like guys that are playing similar roles like this, especially because he's a destroyer. But yeah, I have been impressed with his stats there. If you look at them, like they are fantastic stats on paper, especially the 98 aggression with 91 tackling. Any player that you can get as a defender with defense over 90, and you also have your speed and acceleration over 70 or that, like is going to be a beast on the on the pitch. We also have Hermoso, who is slightly different, as we see here. Now, he does have a couple of different little stats here, but he's very similar, right? So a lot of these players are kind of carbon copies of each other with a couple of variations. So very similar stats, very similar kind of height, obviously a bit more of a ball player. You can pass with him. You can also play him as a left back, which is good. He doesn't have pace, but he is good center back. And when we are training him up here we do have a similar kind of build that we would have with Savage, right? So we're going to have 21 levels to go with this guy. This is the best version of him that they've released by a good bit. 29 levels that guy has, but this guy's got 21 levels with a lot of extra stats there. Starts off at a 79 overall, so they're kind of similar. Uh, this guy's only 22,000 GP. Player skills, everything is the same as the standard card. But what I do like about this Hermosa guy is that you can actually train up a lot of his stats very, very good, right? So if we were to cap this off at 75 and 75 speed, and we were to cap this off at 70 acceleration, we can boost that up one more. We can take one more off that and go again. 
and you're getting 96 aggression with 89 defensive awareness 85 tackling a little bit low on the tackling but i definitely think if you're playing him in a back three kind of like a canavaro type player this guy is going to be very mobile he's left footed so you can play him on the left side he's a nice height he also has low lofted pass which unlocks a lot of different animations with stunning passes that you can start and spray the ball out wide as best as you possibly can We've got second last Carrasco. This guy is very interesting, lads. He's a prolific winger, right? He does play as a left midfielder um, by default on this, and he does have a very nice card. There was a different card of him released a couple of weeks back, a player of the week, which we'll have a look at in a second. But this guy does interest me on wavering form, one touch pass. He doesn't have double touch, which is a bit of a pity, but he does go to like a 95 overall. If you want to train him up the auto allocation way, he's on B rating this week as well. I do like this card a lot. I will say, now this was the left back version of him that you had there, which was a very defensive uh, kind of build um, with speed. This guy is more kind of like, I would say, balance. It's all about getting the ball into the box with crosses um, and cutting in and shooting. You know, you can actually train him up a lot differently. I will have a guide out on him as well. And then last but not least, we have Memphis Depay, who's been searching for a home for a long time. Seems that he's been playing well for Atletico or seems to be, you know, that it could be a spot for him. Obviously a deep line forward. And if we are going to be training him up, we are going to be boosting up his finishing. Not a massive amount. 85 should be enough. Maybe 86 should be enough to bring him up to that. Passing, we don't need to pass in too much because we're going to be already having 76 low pass, which is huge. Dribbling is huge as well because we don't need that to be maxed out for the type of player he is. If you want him Mbappe-like, I will have a guide coming on that. We're all about pace and power here with this guy. That's kind of what we're going to be focusing on down the stretch if we are going to be trying to play this guy a little bit more um, than we would be normally playing, you know, deep line forwards. He's going to be coming deep, collecting passes and laying them off. So that is it, lads. I think that's everybody that we have hit for the Atletico Madrid pack. Is it a spin or a skip? That's up to you. Let me know what you lads are going to do with this pack. Look, if I had to pick, I would say if you got Oblak, if you got Paul, if you got Koke or Carrasco, I would say those three or four guys are definitely worth a punt, right? Griezmann being on D form is a bit of a pity, but the three boys being on uh, B and then Paul is just a very good player. His player ID is very good, obviously, with Argentina. So he is definitely a must-have if you do spin for him. But I don't know. I don't think that this at this stage in the game, if you've been playing the game for a good while and you have a fairly B squad, I think it's probably a skip for me, to be honest with you. But that's just it, lads. I'll be back soon. We will have some player guides. Let me know in the comments below what player guides you want to see first. We definitely will do Carrasco and Griezmann because they're very kind of unique players to train up with the positions that they have and the play styles that they have with the combination of player skills and the positions that they can take up on the pitch. But yeah, we will do DePaul as well. And let me know anybody else that you would like to see. Other than that, lads, I will be back in a bit. Peace.